Hey guys, Kaylee's Canvases here. I am, I've got my, uh, my camera set up straight on my table today, so you can't see my face, um, but I'm here with you and I will be painting with you. Uh, so I wanted to show you a really fun uh, project that you could do. Um, this is one of my paint kits that I have available and um, and I can show you how to paint it and you can customize it to fit what you uh, would like uh, maybe custom to you so right now like I have mine custom to my town so Gilderland New York um, the new one I'm gonna make is going to be customized to my last name uh, but it's gonna be fun I'll show you how to do it uh, and I'll show you everything that come that you would uh, need to paint this so if you wanted to paint one of these um, you can purchase this on my website Kaylee's canvases com. it's in the paint book it's in the it's in the paint kit section um, and you can purchase the kit online uh, but if you want to just watch me paint it absolutely fine um, and I will get started so this is the uh, truck and tree that I have it's a great mantelpiece or some type of holiday decoration it can be turned into a door hanger and hung on your uh, door uh, and that was is a very simple thing as far as just putting holes two holes in here if you order the door hanger kit I will do that for you um, but if you just want it to, to paint it like this you wouldn't have to worry about that um, but it's really easy you could do it with literally just us um, I'll show you you could do it with one of these all right, simple just to drill a couple holes and then some jute twine uh, to put it in and it'll create a door hanger. Um, but we will get right into this. So this is uh, what I call MDF board. All right, so I have one underneath here. All right, so this MDF board is pre-designed. It's got a burn design on it. Uh, so that way it makes it easier when you paint it. All right, so we will have the outline so even if we paint over uh, some of these lines we'll still be able to see the lines. so I will show you how I paint mine and if at any point if you're watching you want to say hi feel free to to just say hi throw a comment out there if you want to watch without comments popping up on the bottom there is a way to turn the comments off you know on your screen um, so that way you can watch without interruption uh, but anyways so this is uh, the truck and tree. It's very easy. What we're going to do, we're going to, I'll show you all the stuff that I have here with it, but we're going to paint the truck red, the tree green, uh, very simple basic stuff. But this can really be customized to your liking if you purchase just the board itself. Um, but the, uh, the kit does come with paint. All right, so I'm going to be using red paint, green paint. I've got two different color greens. I've got a regular green and I've got uh, a light green okay um, I've also got a very bright red all right I have got a gray and I've got white and black here and I've also got two other things I've got green glitter paint which is going to be really nice for putting on the tree itself it'll kind of add a little sparkle to it um, but that's again optional if you don't if you want to do it or you don't want to do it and I also have something called snow tech so if you saw my video about the ceramic Christmas tree you'll see you'll you already know how cool the snow text is um, but it definitely it just adds texture uh, to the to the tree or whatever you're making and it makes it look like snow and it dries hard which is really cool um, so anyway, so with me today, I have a few paint brushes. Um, you know, you can use more than this if you want to, or you can use less. Whatever you have will really work. But I'm going to be uh, mixing up some paint today, and when I do that, I will show you how I do that. But we have uh, a good size flat brush, so, so a large flat brush, a small flat brush, and then we have a small fine liner brush. All right, and this is going to help us make the small details, and this will help us get into little areas that we, you know, might not be able to get into with the larger flat brush. I also have with me, and I'm not sure if I'm going to use it, but I can show you a different technique for the snow. I've got one of these fan brushes, all right, and this could be used to add some snow decoration uh, on the tree, which I'll show you um, if I can't get the if I can't get the same. Uh, thing going on with my other brushes. So I also have a paper plate to mix up some paint and I have 
uh, paper towels to dry off my paint and some cups of water. All right, so I will get down to it. All right, I'm, uh, I am using, so if you purchase this kit, you will receive a video tutorial on how to do this. Um, I am going to be starting off, I'll get some colors on my plate. I'm gonna be starting off with the red. We're gonna put the red on the truck. All right, what we will do, and it's honestly, I probably didn't even need that much. We're gonna start off with a basic red, uh, just a red solid uh, color across the whole truck. Obviously not the tires and the windows or the tree. Um, but then we'll add some of the darker tones that I have in there, which if you look back, hang on, let me grab the, if you look back, you'll see there are some darker reds in here, all right? And that just gives it that nice old rustic truck look, like it just came from the farm, like it's delivering the tree, all right? So I'm going to start off with that. And then I will also show you, I'm going to actually put a little bit of black because to get that darker red color, we're going to add some black in with it. All right, so I'm just adding a little tiny bit of black on my plate. So I got some red and some black, and I will show you how to mix up that red color. All right, so let's see. We're going to start with the red. And whenever I do this, I always get my paintbrush uh, very, like, very lightly damp, so I get it wet, and then I just you know, dry it off a little bit on the paper towel. It makes it a little bit for a little bit smoother of a coat. All right, so we're just gonna start off by painting the truck red. And now you can do two coats if you want. I believe I did two coats on my original, uh, on my original truck. All right, and you'll notice that as I'm going over the lines, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see them, but I can still see them on my part. If you go over the lines a little bit and the tire with the red, it's not a big deal. Um, some of the things you might want to watch out for is like if you're doing the any darker color on top of a light color, you do have to be careful where you get it, but when it's a, a lighter onto the darker, it's not usually that big of a deal. All right, so this is MDF board. Um, I believe that just means it's like modified, uh, condensed modified, uh, like cardboard type of deal. It is very, it's pretty sturdy. Um, it's not, it's not wood. And so the nice thing about this is I know, you know, a lot of people might think, well, I'd rather have wood. Um, but the nice thing about this is wood is heavy for a door hanger. Uh, so with this, it's, it's not wood. Um, it's just going to be nice and light. So that way it doesn't uh, it doesn't hang too heavy on your door or on your mantle, whichever. All right, so we're just painting the entire truck red. I'm going to go around the door handle and around the windows. It's not a super big deal if you go if you go over it a little bit. All right, if you have a hard time getting around some of the um, the edges here and in the small areas, you can use the smaller flat brush. Don't mind if you hear any noises in the background. I got my kids here. They're sneaking around trying to grab a... Uh, something to eat for dinner because I am silly and I scheduled a Facebook Live for dinner time. But that's how it fit into my schedule. So, they're being very considerate and giving me some quiet time for this. All right, so if you see some streaks right now, when this dries, you probably won't even see those streaks. And also, the more layers you get on uh, and the more colors as far as like the the darker color for some of the shadows or some of the like the the dirty parts of the truck you know to make it look older you're not even going to notice any little blemishes so when you do this it's kind of nice because it's very simple this is pretty much like a coloring book that you can add your own little your own little uh, swing on it And if anybody has any questions at all throughout this process, 
feel free to throw a question in the comments. Um, I can't see my screen right now, but when I get a chance, I will, I'll, you know, I'll stand up and take a peek at my, at my screen to see if I have any questions. But it's pretty self-explanatory, so I don't expect to have a lot of questions. But it's okay if you do, even if you just want to say hi. Alright, so I don't know if you can see, um, if you can still see the lines. I'm going to take a peek. Um, I can see them, so there's, uh, I can still see them, but you can't really see them on the camera too much. But you'll, you can see right here that there's some lines. The lines are kind of, they're like burned in, so it's not like just a solid line that was like drawn on. It's literally, you can you can feel the indentation of it. So it's it, it does make it nice because even when you paint, you can still see those lines, which makes it easier to, uh, to paint different layers and still know what the heck you're doing. All right, so I'm even painting the the fenders uh, around the tire, and we'll add some highlight to that as well, well highlight or low light. I'll show you that in a minute because we're almost done with this first layer. I do also I forgot to mention I do have my my blow dryer with me in case I need to dry this quickly. I think the only times that I'll really need to dry is if I need to dry like white to put something on top of it or something so it doesn't so it doesn't blend in with the other colors or black or something. Alright, so I've got my basic red on here. It looks pretty bold on the camera and I'm but I do think it needs a second layer because as it starts to dry I can kind of see it's a little transparent but not much so I'm just going to touch up the spots that are drying and add a little bit of a second layer and it's okay if I like right there I kinda went over it's okay if you go over a little bit alright so we're just making this red a little bit more bold Yeah, I'm not super worried if I go over the lines with this red because um, the black on this tire on these tires will definitely overpower the red, so it's not a big deal. I am going to be a little bit more careful around the windows uh, because it is going to have gray, and I don't know if gray will be as powerful as the black, but so I'm just going to be a little bit more careful. And the cool thing about these truck and trees, um, you can make them for yourself, or you can make one for somebody as a holiday gift. Because, like I said, they are customizable, and people love things that are customizable. You know, if it said something like what I'm going to paint on mine, I'm going to paint. It's going to say Smith Farms on it. Um, and I mean that would be really really cute if it had your last name with farms on it so that way it would be like significant to you All right, so I've almost I'm almost done with my second layer the second layer goes a lot quicker because you're just doing a, a quick second over not a big deal um, to touch up everything because for the most part you just need to touch up the little areas that aren't super bold all right so I I touched up that and what I'm gonna do now and it might it's always weird when you're in like that transition period where you're painting and it's the middle of your painting and you're like oh this doesn't look that good um, don't let that make you nervous um, because most paintings always look weird in the middle phase and they always come out good in the end um, but anyways, so for the next part, I'm going to put the 
like the darker tones on the truck for like the shadows and the rust or whatever is going to be on here to make it look really beat up. Um, so for that I'm going to add a little bit of black to the red. So now when you're mixing colors you always want to do a little bit of darker with the lighter because if you do lighter into darker it will most likely be too dark. So you just take a little bit of black and mix it in and you'll notice that the black overpowers it pretty quickly. All right, and you can just add a little bit at a time until it gets to the to the spot where you want it, to the color that you want it. All right, so I have a pretty nice dark red going on here. Almost looks kind of like a rusty red, which is perfect for the truck. Okay, and now we're, you can really add this wherever you want to, um, but I'm going to add it where you would most likely see shadows or darkness on the truck because a lot of older trucks have some weird indentations that they don't have on new trucks. New trucks are nice and smooth. Older trucks have weird curves and lines to them, um, and you can adjust this. I recommend when you do this, start off a little bit lighter. If you want to go darker, that's fine. You can't with the MDF board you can't really take away the darkness but you can always add a little bit of darkness so I am just going to go ahead and I'm gonna go around with some of this darker color it will look weird to you so don't freak out and be like oh my gosh she's you know she's got all these weird blotches of paint not a big deal it'll all work out in the end alright so I'm just adding the dark alright you can kind of see I kind of made like um, some lines here for the hood of the truck. All right, I've got some some lines that you can kind of make out that that's the fender, and we can always make this darker if we want to. I'm gonna add some here. Because in a lot of trucks, there's some weird lines here, too. But the one thing you definitely don't want to do, you definitely don't want to eliminate all your bright red. Because that contrast, that dark light contrast, really, really makes it, um, really brings out the detail. Alright, so I'm going to do on the door. Now, you can't really see it on the camera. I can see it. I have two lines. I have one here and one here. So I'm going to kind of do the outline of the door. Alright, we're just going to add that shadow. And it's just pretty much going to look like a dirty, streaky truck right now. But it's okay because it always dries better than it looks <laughs> mid stroke, like mid brush stroke. All right, this is the back panel in the door that I'm painting. You can see they have a little cab back here. So it's, it's kind of one of those trucks where it looks like somebody may be able to sit in the back possibly. Right, and I'm just kind of um, making sure there's a difference so that way you know you could see you could see that there's a difference in uh, the door here all right and your truck doesn't have to look exactly like mine if you want to leave your truck all red that is absolutely 100% fine if you're too scared to do the the dark parts of it that is okay And the nice thing about these Facebook Lives is I always save it to my, my Facebook page. So if you're not able to watch it now, or you can only be on for a little bit, you can always watch it later. Right. So I'm starting to see I need a little bit more dark. My brush is getting a little dry. Alright, 
if you have any questions, remember, don't be afraid to ask any questions that you might have. And this kit, if anybody's just coming on, this kit is available on my website at kayleescanvases.com. Right, so I'm just going to add a little bit of shadow over here. We're just kind of adding shadow all over. Kind of making it go with the curves of what we think the truck would be. Alright, going around the fender. I think I need a little bit more of that dark red. Remember, don't add too much. You can always add more later. Alright. There we go. And it's okay if there's a lot of dark spots. Um, don't get too nervous about it because when it dries, it's going to look at a lot better. Not to mention some of the... Um, some of the snow might cover some of this. So I'm going to kind of leave this... Not so dark because this is a tail light. At least it looks like it's a tail light. Um, so I'm kind of going over that a little bit. All right, I think I got a good amount of dark in here, um, but I still I really love the dark. So um, I might just add a touch more. I can always add a touch more later if I want. I am, let's see, I am pretty much done with this dark. Okay. All right, so it was as simple as that for the color of the truck. I'm just going to rinse my brush off. All right, and I can do, and I could do, really do any step next. Um, I'm going to leave the truck part alone, like the red part of the truck alone for a little bit so it can dry. But I can, I think, actually, I think what I'll do next, I'm going to do the tires next. I'm going to do them solid black um, because we're eventually going to be adding white over in the middle to kind of make them look like white walled tires. Uh, but I'm going to do them solid black for now. That way it has a chance to dry before I put the white on for the white walls because you don't, when you mix white and black, if it's wet, obviously, the obvious reason, it will make gray. All right, so we will do black. I've still got some black on my palette or my paper plate and I'm just going to use a little because a little bit of black goes a long way and I'm just going to fill in this tire here remember you might not be able to see the lines but I can still see the lines if you have this kit you'll be able to see the lines too I promise it's literally only the camera has the camera has a hard time picking it up all right, if your tires are not perfectly straight, like around the line, don't freak out. Don't freak out. Once you get all these colors on here and it's all painted, you won't even notice these lines. I can only see them because I'm painting it and I'm looking for it, but it's no big deal. And honestly, I don't think anybody says, hey, yeah, this looks like a real truck. You know, oh my gosh, those tires aren't perfectly round. Um, so don't freak out. Do not, you do not have to be a perfectionist. Sometimes... We um, kill our mood with art by trying to be a perfectionist. I have definitely done that in the past where I get really frustrated and give up on a painting simply because something wasn't perfect enough. All right, so now I'm gonna do the other tire. I have a really thin layer of black on here uh, because uh, I want it to dry quickly so that way I'll be able to add the white onto it later on. After we're done with the tires we're gonna go on to the tree um, to give the tires a chance to dry and if you are just coming on 
and watching me paint. I'm painting this truck and tree. It's customizable. Um, it can be a decoration piece for your mantle, your fireplace mantle, or it can be a turned into a door hanger. I do have the kit available online, so you can do this yourself, or I even take uh, personalized orders. So if you're not artistic or you have no interest in art, that's okay. I can custom, I can paint this and customize it to your liking. I could put, you know, anything on here. I can put your town and state. Like from the first one I did, I did uh, Gilderland, New York. Um, you know, but for this truck, I'm going to put Smith Farms. So it's customized to me, um, but it can be customized in any way that you want. If you want it to be your first name, I could put Kaylee Farms if I wanted to. I could put Kaylee's Canvases. Actually, that might be a great idea. I might do Kaylee's Canvases on here, but that wouldn't really fit in with the whole tree theme, but it could be done. All right, so what I'm going to do next, I'm going to let these tires dry. And I'm going to paint the tree green. I'm literally going to do the whole tree one flat solid color of green. And I will show you why. We will add the highlights and lowlights in a little bit. Okay. Alright, so I've got my green. Literally, it's super easy, guys. Super, super easy. Especially when you have a tutorial to follow along with. I'm just going to paint the whole tree green. Probably have to do a second coat like I did with the red. Now just so you know, this, uh, this kit that I have here it is um, MDF board. I know I already said that, but it is something that I obviously can't make MDF board. I do not have the tools to create my own truck and tree uh, wood cutout or anything like that. So um, when I order this, I order it in bulk um, from a wholesale company because I'm a business. So it's not anything that you know I would have been able to get without a business. So like regular average person uh, without a business wouldn't be able to order from this company. I, I've seen this cut out from other companies um, and I, there's a lot of cute designs out there that you can do yourself um, but this one in particular I just like the shape of it, I like the size of it, I like the, the way the lines flowed um, so I wanted this particular one so I get uh, wood cutouts from them. Um, I'm going to be doing another Facebook Live and I think it's like a couple weeks um, to show you guys how to do a 3D door hanger, a holiday door hanger. It's really cute because it's got 3D pieces that we're going to glue on. Um, but anyways, so this company um, is a wholesaler and you have to buy in bulk obviously because it's a wholesaler. So when it comes to these trees, I'm only going to have a certain amount. Um, you know, I can only buy them in sets of 12. So with these trucks and trees, if you want one, I recommend you buy the kit um, or you ask me to custom make you one because once they run out, they run out and I'm not going to have them be available anymore. Uh, I mean, unless I get a, a, like a ton, ton of demand for them. I think I bought two sets, so I believe I have 24. Um, but, if, uh, but I'm not going to order any more unless I get a ton of demand for it. So if you want one, I recommend you get it before those 24 are gone. Well, minus two, so 22. I have sold a few. So, um, But anyways, guys, yeah, so I've got limited supply for this. It's pretty much what I'm trying to say. So if you want to get one, definitely make sure that you message me or whatever to get this. And you can always come back to this Facebook Live also uh, to paint along with me. But the kit will come with a video in itself. Okay. So I got that. What I'm going to do... It doesn't have to be perfect. I got some darks and lights in here. It's not a big deal either way because we're going to add some darks and lights on top of it. I am going to take my blow dryer to this. Actually, maybe I'll do the windows first. I hate using the blow dryer on camera. So, 
I will do the windows first and the handle before I blow dry. All right, so I'm going to use the gray. All right, and you can really, like I said, you can use any colors you want, but I'm going to do the gray because it makes a nice window color. Okay, let's see. I don't need a lot because I'm literally just doing this little bitty part here. So I literally got two small windows and a small door handle. So I just got a little bit of gray. I'm just going to trace the outline. I do not have a steady hand. I have to go really slow to make sure I make it look all right. I do want to be careful in this part because I don't want to get the black is covering the red but I don't know the red is a little bit more transparent than the black so it probably won't color or I'm sorry it's a little bit more transparent than the gray so I don't think the red will cover it so be a little bit more careful when you're doing the window because it will be harder to fix. I mean, typically if you if you mess anything up on this board, um, my recommendation is just to paint the whole entire thing white and start over. But obviously let it dry if you do that. Paint it white, let it dry, and then start over. And this would also be something really cute. Um, you know, we've got all these silly COVID restrictions. Um, I know not everybody thinks it's silly, so I do apologize for saying that. But we have all these COVID restrictions that we're coming into now. Um, and they really, really suck for the holiday season. You know, just when we think the year couldn't get any more crazy, we come back into the winter time, and we've got more restrictions coming up. You can't have more than 10 people for Thanksgiving dinner. Um, but anyways, so this, if you've got like a small group of people that you want to do this with, this would make a really cute, like holiday gathering, you know, in place of, you know, maybe you don't have 10 people, you know, 10 or more people because you can't. So maybe if you've got, you know, five, six, seven, eight people, maybe you just do a truck and tree, you know, and you guys make it your own little paint party. You know, nobody's getting too close to each other. They all have their personal space because they're painting. And you guys can make it unique to yourselves. So I did get a little bit of red in my window, but that's okay because we're going to cover that with a little bit of white uh, to make it look like the truck is driving. We'll do that a little bit later once this dries. So my green is actually almost dry. I think what I will do, I will show you guys how I mix up some green, some darker green. Because what we'll do now is we'll put in some darker green right along here, um, and that will create uh, that will create like a shadow effect. All right, so we'll do more of the darker green here, some light green here, and then once that's all dry, we'll touch up some other details. All right, so for this. I'm going to add some, just a tiny little bit of black into my green, all right? You can always add more. Remember, you always add dark to the light color. You don't ever add light to the dark when it comes to paint anyways. Light overcomes a lot of things, but not so much paint, unless it's white paint. White paint pretty much covers a lot of things, which is pretty cool. All right, so we can feel free to... Turn this whole green to a dark green. Because I already did my base green. So I don't know if anybody is already decorated for Christmas yet. I, I actually did the other day with the kids. I decorated for Christmas. I don't know why. It's very early. We don't usually do it until after Thanksgiving, but felt like doing something different this year so anyways so I've got that darker green color all right and I'm just gonna add it in here I'm not gonna be very particular about it I might add like solid in the corner like a solid green but then I'm just gonna kind of I'm gonna kind of dab like it was like part of the branches 
all right? And it doesn't have to be perfect. Don't feel like, oh my gosh, this isn't perfect. It's looking weird. It doesn't matter. We're literally just making a shadow, a shadow for the branches. And remember, things in things in nature are rarely perfect. So that's one of the beautiful things about nature. Trees have imperfections and flaws. Snowflakes are all different. So don't feel like your tree on this truck has to be perfect either. I'm, I am being a little careful along the edges, but even if not, like on my other one, I went over a little bit, and that's okay because it kind of makes it looks like it kind of makes it look like some of the branches might be sticking out over, over the edge of the, the truck bed. So I'm not not too worried if I go over any. All right, and remember, we're adding more of the dark. The dark is mostly going to be concentrated in this corner. And if you don't think it's dark enough or, you know, or whatever, you can always add some more darkness. Um, people are usually scared to add a lot of dark uh, to their paintings because they're afraid they're going to mess up. You know, but don't be afraid. That's literally what makes things stand out is the contrast between dark and light. Even if we, so we, I got a good amount of dark on here. Okay. I think I might just add a touch more black into it to make it a little bit darker because I kind of want it just slightly darker in this corner here. I really like contrast. I'm telling you guys, contrast really makes it stand out. I mean, if you look at most things in life, most things in life have a lot of contrast. You will have some extreme lights with some extreme darks in life. If you just look at nature. And again, we're not doing this to be super perfect or beautiful and make all the branches match. We are just adding an idea of branches. And you see I got some little branches peeking out. I think actually, I think I might add that. There you go. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, now I will add the light next, the light colors. All right, so I'm going to rinse off my brush. You always want to make sure you rinse off your brush in between colors. I see there's a little bit of shine on my pitch, on my truck. That's just because the paint is still wet, so the light is shining on it. But it is dark. But always make sure you rinse off your brush in between colors. Rinse it really good. Dry it off. Make sure you get all that color out. You don't want to have any dark, like green or dark black or any of that in your brush because then it will get mixed in if you do a lighter color. Right, I am going to do... It's drying pretty good, actually. Uh, one of the things about MDF is it dries pretty quickly. I think it kind of absorbs some of that that color, uh, the paint. So right now, I'm just gonna I'm gonna use my fine liner brush. I'm gonna get the fine liner brush wet. All right, I got it wet, dried it off a little bit, so it's just a little bit, a little bit wet. I'm just slightly damp, and I'm gonna get my my black paint, and I'm gonna paint some lines so we know where the door is. We know where you know, the running board is or where the lines for 
for pretty much any part of the truck is. All right, and now when I paint, I always try to start at the left or the left and work my way right because I'm right-handed, all right, and I want to be careful. You know, I don't want to really go like this. If you are left-handed, you might work from the opposite way. Our canvas, our board is already wet, so just be careful. You don't want to smudge anything or get anything on your hand, although I get stuff on me all the time. All right, so I'm just going to make some lines here to identify parts of the truck. It does not have to be perfect. And it does not have to look like a straight up cartoon. So you want to be careful not to make your lines go all the way around. Like if I, I don't want to make it go all the way around the fender. I just want it to be around parts of it. This would be easier if my board was dry. I probably should have dried it so that way I could have steadied my hand on my truck. But it's wet so I can't do that. When you're doing this, if at any point you want to be able to rest your hand on your on your truck, you know, to stabilize your hand, um, trying to find the dry spots. Um, but if at any point you want to do that, feel free to grab a blow dryer and dry that thing. We're going to make the lines where the door goes up. Remember, this is an old beat up truck, so if your lines aren't perfectly straight, do not worry about it because it's just going to look like it's a little dent or something. But feel free to take your time if you need to. Again, I'm just painting on top of those lines that I can see that you can't. But if you have, if you purchase the kit, you will be able to see them. Okay. The top of the door. Just gives the impression that a door is there. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You want to, when you do the line down though, one thing I will say, you want to be careful not to do like the line right here because then it'll go down into your handle. You want to make sure that it comes far enough over that you give your door some space. Right, and again, I'm just doing this to kind of identify parts of the truck. It just adds some more detail and character. If you don't want to do those parts, you definitely don't have to. I'm going to outline a little bit right here. I'm going to make this the tail light. Right, and this could be the bumper. Pretty sure it is a bumper. All right, paint some more lines for the fender. Remember, we don't want it to connect completely because then it would make it look a little too cartoonish. So don't be worried if you give it like a little bit of gap like I did right here because uh, then it doesn't look quite so cartoonish. All right, right now it looks like we got a dirty truck on our hands. Um, I'm actually even, oh, I forgot a couple details I want to add. Let's see. I'm going to add an outline to the windows a little bit. Wherever you think there would be shadow is really where you want to put these lines. Do not have the most stable hand. But it's okay. I'm going to add some lines around the back window. All 
If you're just jumping on, we're painting the truck and tree um, cutout. It is uh, made of MDF board, and we can either use this just as a decoration piece, or we can use it as we can create it into a door hanger. Let's do a little bit around the door handle too. My truck is drying pretty quickly. This is nice. All right, and as it dries, if you want to decide to add some more of the darker color, because um, I noticed like some spots it definitely is drying a little bit lighter, but it's okay. It's okay. So I'm gonna add some a line for the bottom of the door, and I'm gonna leave some space here because I'm gonna put the running board here. Um, so the bottom of the door will be right about here. Just make it go straight across. If it's crooked, that's okay. I'm going to use my other flat brush for a minute. And for this one, I might even use a little bit of that darker red with some black. And this doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just mixing some red in because I want I want it to be straight up black. Let's see. Definitely gotta look like a dirty running board. But we're gonna add some snow around it anyways, so it's not a big deal. If it doesn't come out exactly the way you want it to. Let's see. And so you can make it like that or you can extend it all the way out, which actually I just realized I want to extend it all the way out to the back part. There. Now we've got our running board. It's our side step. Alright, the tree and parts of my truck are still wet. I'm just drying off, rinsing and drying off my brushes because I want to make sure I have clean brushes. I'm going to um, do, I'm going to attempt to do the circles. I'm pretty sure my tires are dry, so I'm going to attempt to do the white circles in the middle. All right, so I'm going to add some white to my paper plate, my palette, if you will. And I'm just going to make a decent sized circle. You can make it bigger, you can make it smaller. Whatever you think your tires would look like. But remember, if, it, if it's not perfectly round, it's okay. These are old truck tires. Even if it picks up a little bit of the black in it, it's okay, because these will be white walled tires. So even if it doesn't come out perfectly white because it's an old truck, it's okay if part of the white looks a little gray because it is an old truck. All right, so I got one and now this might be a little difficult because we want to try to get this back one to be about this about the same size as the first one. So my recommendation is start small and make it bigger. Um, and if you go too big, then you just make the other one a little bit bigger. Just be careful you don't go too far. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, just close. Most people don't notice or care, and most people like that freehand, um, that freehand style. It kind of gives you the idea that not everything has to be so rigid and perfect, and makes you kind of feel a little bit better about your life. Okay, I think it might need to be a little bit bigger. Just a little. There we go. 
Oops. See what I mean? This is definitely probably the hardest part. <laughs> Just making these darn white walls. All right, I got them close enough. All right, so we're gonna let that dry. And next, let's see, what are we gonna do next? We'll do the windows, we'll add the white to the windows. So for this, we're not gonna use the large flat brush, we'll use the fine liner brush. We're gonna add some white to the windows. Right, again, my fine liner brush is clean. I don't want it to be dirty. I'm just going to kind of make a little line down this way. And this is kind of like a reflection. And then I'm just going to pull some lines, some uneven lines across. I don't, it does not need, this part does not not need to be perfect because whether this, whether in your head, whether you see this as reflection or snow passing by his window, it's not all going to line up perfectly straight. So no matter how you see it, it does not need to be perfect. And we'll do a little bit on the back window. This one we definitely don't want to do as much. I can cover up some of that red that I accidentally got on there. And, and just pull it. I'm just pulling it out. Short little strokes to give it the appearance of motion or snow or whatever you want and if you um, I actually got a little tiny bit of white paint on my black it's weird because I always tell you light doesn't really cover up dark but for some reason white paint seems to be the only paint that covers up everything when it's dry all right so I am going to I think I'm going to blow dry my truck, so don't mind the noise for a minute. I definitely want to make sure this is dry before the next step because I don't want any of my any of my paint mixing together. Right now my tree is the most wet part of the truck and wherever I put those darker tones. So we're just giving it a quick dry so we can add some highlights. And this will be completely customizable. If you're just hopping on, I apologize for the loud noise from the blow dryer. This will be done and over within a minute. Um, but we're just drying it so we can go on to the next step of the painting. And when you're, whenever you use a blow dryer, just be careful because sometimes I use it and I forget what I'm aiming at and my paper plate and paper towels go flying off my table. I'm almost all the way dry here. Almost, almost dry guys. Sorry about the noise, it'll be over with in about 20 seconds. Alright, we're going to work on the tree next. And the next step that we're going to do is we're going to add some light green onto this part of the tree. All right, that's good enough for me. So I'm going to take my, my light green and I'm going to um, put a little bit on the plate. I don't need a lot. All right, and you can use any brush for this, but right now I'm just going to use my, my uh, small flat brush. And I'm just going to kind of load up the end of the brush and because I don't need a lot. I've already got my base colors on here, so I don't need a lot of green. Um, 
we've already got a couple different colors so I'm just gonna kind of add you know it's just some more contrast because like I said contrast is great so when you're doing this like when I do it you don't have to think this this much into it but when I do it like I try to keep the dark at the bottom of the branches and I try to keep the light at the top of the branches Okay, and this obviously gives the illusion that the light is hitting the tree. It tells you which direction the light is hitting from. All right, now a lot of this is going to get covered up. So like I said, we don't have to go crazy with it because we're going to cover it up with snow. All right, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just adding some, some contrast. All right, we don't want to cover everything up. It's okay to do some like shaky motions because it kind of gives the illusion of like different branches. All right, we can come a little bit over here, but don't go too crazy over here because this is where most of the shadow is. Again, like I said, we're going to be adding a lot of different colors to this tree, so it does not need to be the most perfect colors because all the colors will work out just fine together. All right, so I'm just adding some more highlights to the tree branches, and when it dries, it is going to be a little, it's not going to be as bright as it is right now. It's going to, like right now, it looks a little, um, Right now it looks a little uh, bright, um, but once we once it dries, it'll look a little darker. So we can always add like a second layer if we need to. And remember, we are going to be adding snow, so you don't need to go crazy on this step. We just want to add nice colors, nice contrast. If anybody has any questions about this? Feel free to ask. This kit is available on my website at kayleyscanvases.com, um, right in the paint kit section. Or you can just order it as a customizable door hanger if you want. Alright, I think we got most of the green that we need. Let me just add a little tiny touch yeah. all right I think we got most of that all right so I'm gonna rinse off my brush again and now really when I make decisions on what I'm gonna paint next it's basically based on whatever dries first so right now my tree is wet so next I'm going to work on some other details so I think I'll do the gray add like the gray little I don't know what those are called, the things that go in the middle of the tire. Don't know what it's called, hubcap, whatever. I am not a vehicle expert, although I do love trucks. Alright, so we're just painting a little circle inside the white circle. You can add a second layer if you need to. Sorry, I'm kind of moving around if the camera is shaking. Okay. Alright, so we got that. The tires are pretty much done. We're really coming along pretty quickly, actually. I know it's been an hour, but holy cow, time goes by fast when you're painting. Alright, so next I'm going to add some white highlight um, and that's just going to be kind of like a reflection or maybe snow which however you want to perceive it we will add some snow to the truck as well um, let's see so I'm gonna use I can use either brush for this I think I will use the fine actually I'll use both brushes just because there could be different so I'm gonna use the flat brush 
I'm just going to add highlights, not necessarily where there is darkness, but like where you think that a light might reflect or snow might build up, whatever you think. But however you see this in your mind, really. We'll add some snow also so I'll show you how to kind of get that nice rough snow texture too and remember a lot of times we like to go with the curve of the truck now I might add a little bit of white right here so it looks like a tail light So let's see what we got. All right, so now we've got some different reflections on here. I'm going to add some snow, all right, uh, where, wherever we think that the snow would build up. So I'm still using my, flat, my small flat brush, and I'm just going to kind of dab, all right, where I think there might be snow. And you can do some parts that are bigger, like more snow, like I'm going to, like kind of like on the front of the truck where it would be hitting, I might add some more streaks or whatever. But I can kind of just dab and kind of get a nice cool snow effect. Alright, and it's okay to have different textures in here too. And we're even going to add the snow text onto this, which is going to give it a different texture as well. So like along like right here where when the tire's spinning you might see some like snow spray up. And you can add as much or as little snow as you want. It's really up to you. I'll add in some other spots too. Let's see. I like to start off with wherever there's going to be the most snow and then kind of add like little bits as I go. That way it kind of gives me an idea of how much I still want to add. And now this tree is not going to be exactly like the last tree that I did. This one's going to be slightly different in some areas. You know, the snow might look a little different, the, the shadows might look a little different, and that's okay. It's okay for it to look a little different. It would be pretty boring if everybody painted the exact same way, or if every painting was, everybody had one style of painting. Right, so, my brush is kind of dry right now. I didn't add like a super huge amount because I've, well, I've been dabbing. Um, but as you can see, it kind of gives like this lighter snow effect, you know, as you come up like away from the bulk of the snow. So the bulk of the snow is here. We've got some uh, lighter areas of snow where maybe a little bit, of, a little bit grabbed onto the truck. I'm just kind of dabbing. And when, and when your brush is dry and like, I still have a tiny bit of white paint on, but my brush is pretty much dry. Um, and it gives it that nice light snow effect. Uh, so, and you can use that wherever you want. We will add some snowflakes too. Uh, the snowflakes are really cute and make it look like it's snowing. So don't don't uh, add so much white that you don't have any more room for the snow. So just be conscious of where you're doing these. But again, no pressure. Art is very flexible for each person. Right, if you're just hopping on, um, we are getting close to the end of our painting. 
we're adding the snow. Remember, you can really make this however you want. I really haven't added too much white to my paintbrush. Kind of going with, I added the bulk of snow and highlights, and I'm just kind of going with um, the light, the light snow effect. And we're going to add snow to the tree too, but we're going to wait until that dries because I don't want to, you know, blend my colors together. I don't want to have like a muddy whitish green color. And so one of the other things I was going to tell you, so like I was able to do that with this brush. I was able to get that nice effect. Um, and, and you can too, if you like allow it to get dry and just very lightly dab. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, if you want to use that fan brush that I was showing you, um, that'll give you a similar effect. If you just kind of just dab the, the very end of your, like the corner of your brush into the fan brush, you can kind of just, it'll give you that same effect. And you could probably actually even do it a little faster, have a little bit more uneven, uh, dots which will make it look a little bit more realistic so maybe i'll just finish up the rest of it with this the rest of the snow effect down here that way you get different size dots it does give a nice this is this brush is good for uh, trees like leaves on trees uh, or bushes um so it works it's very very useful for a lot of natural stuff We'll even add some snow to our tires in a minute down at the bottom because when you're driving through snow, sometimes you don't always see the bottom of your tires. Well, of course you wouldn't because you're driving, but people looking at it won't see it. This is coming along nicely. So we've got a nice snowy effect here. It really looks like they're really trekking through the snow. I like, I'm sorry guys if I make these stories up and <laughs> imagine what's going on uh, while I'm painting. Sometimes when you imagine things while you're painting, it kind of helps you add details. So don't be afraid to imagine. The other thing is that's really nice is if you've got stuff going on in your mind, you know, anything, uh, anything that's good, bad, uh, it literally, indifferent, whatever, it literally takes all that, that thought away. You don't really think of anything else when you're painting. So a lot of people use it as art therapy. So I think I've added just about as much white as I want to add. I got a lot of white going on there. I, I don't want to get this brush wet yet, so I'm just kind of going to leave it with the paint on it because it, the brush definitely works better when it's, um, when it's dry. But you don't want to let it completely dry. Anyways, so... Next, I am going to do, hmm, I think I'll work on what's going to go in the middle because my tree is still slightly wet. So next, I'm going to add in the name here. All right, so I'm going to use my fine liner brush for that, and I'm going to do Smith Farms because it's unique to me. Alright, so for this step, you definitely don't want to get too much paint on your brush because 
depending on how long your name is. Uh, so Smith is a short name. All right, but when I did Gilderland, New York, I kind of had to fit Gilderland around here, and I had to be a little bit careful how I did it. You can make the words round, you can make them straight across, whatever's easiest for you. Making them round is not always easy. But anyways, you don't want like a, your brush totally loaded up with paint. All right, so just get a small amount of paint on the tip of your brush. All right, I don't know if you can see it. But like that, you don't want too much. And then you're just going to paint whatever the name that you want on here. So I'm going to do Smith Farms. All right. And if it's not perfect handwriting, that's okay. It kind of adds to the whole rustic look of it. Sorry if you guys see my head on camera. I'm... Trying to steady my hand. I'm quiet because I'm trying to really focus here. This is the second hardest part. The circles are the hardest and writing this word is the second hardest. So I'm not giving it a huge curve actually. All right, so I got Smith. Now I'll add the farms. Don't mind my silence. So that's pretty good. I can, I mean, it's not my best, but it's pretty good. <laughs> but you can really do this however you like. And you can touch it up too. It doesn't need to be perfect. This is an old beat up truck. You can even change the letters a little bit if you want to. I'm kind of making them a little bit thicker because I want it to stand out. Whenever you make anything thicker, it leaves the chance for making mistakes, but if you're successful with it, it can make it stand out. Okay, and you can do, even do a little design on the side of it if you wanted to. You could draw a little tree next to it. Um, I don't want to do that. I'm going to leave it kind of like that, but I might add some snow on the side so it looks a little bit even. Like it's not uneven, you know? Okay. Now... My tree is almost dry. I think what I'll do next is I'll do the final touches on the tr on the truck, um, and then we'll go into the rest of the tree. All right. So I'm gonna uh, at this point I'm just gonna use my fine liner brush to add little dots for snow. Okay. So and just do them very sporadic. It does not have to be perfect. No rhyme or reason. We're just adding dots of snow. And we'll add some onto the truck later on after we get the other snow on. Doesn't matter if your dots are big or small. They can be different sizes. If you're just jumping on, I can't see because I can't see my screen. But if you're just jumping on, this uh, we are painting a truck and tree uh, cut out. And it's really great for mantle decorations um, or um, as a door hanger which could very easily be done. You could just drill a couple holes and add some jute twine. Um, I do have this kit available on my website at kayleyscanvases.com uh, 
If you're really creative, you could even cut out your own tree. I literally, I, I have seen people, I'm in a few different art groups, and I have seen people cut out their own truck and tree, and I'm like, holy cannoli, like that's, that's a lot of work. I don't think I could do that. I mean, maybe someday, but I don't have time right now with the kids and full-time job and my art gig going on. Alright, so we're just adding little snowflakes because it's snowing. And it's really starting to come together. So like all those little imperfections that you saw in the beginning that might have been bothering you, they literally all go away once you start painting the snow. And you're like, holy cow, this is really starting to come together. We're almost done, guys. Probably just about another 10 minutes. Still using my fine liner brush. Just adding random dots. And I do make these, if you want me to make one uh, customized for you, I can definitely do that. Just send me a message um, and I can customize it for you. Okay, just all you have to do, send me a message, let me know. I only have a certain amount of these because I don't, I have to buy them in bulk. So I don't want to just go and order a whole bunch of them. So, I mean, unless I have like super high demand for this, I'm not going to go out and, and order a whole bunch more. So if you want one now, like now is your chance. And I had a few people request some, so I do have some that I'm going to be working on. Uh, but if you want to get them before they're gone, definitely send me a message. I think we're getting pretty good here with these snowflakes. Just about done. Oh yeah, I forgot I gotta add some to the tires too. It doesn't snow on everything except for the tires. Bit of snow down here and I can just kind of squiggle that right in. It does not have to be anything fancy because snow when it falls does not fall perfectly flat. We'll show you the snow text. Um, you can add snow text if you want. Uh, I do think it adds some pretty cool texture, but it's not necessary. If you um, are doing this at home, you could even like literally paint this on a canvas if you wanted to. Uh, but you, if you don't have snow text, um, you can just use white paint. Right now we're using white paint for like the snowflakes and little details. Uh, that you can't do with snow text, but snow text is cool for like, like the snow down here and the snow we're going to put on the branches. It's pretty cool. Alright, I got a lot of snowflakes here. Okay. Next step. Our tree is pretty much dry, but there's one little wet spot, so I am going to dry that with the blow dryer, uh, and then I will add on the white snow and the snow text.
Yeah, don't mind the sound. Right now, I'm not going to worry about drying off the whole truck because we're done with the truck. We're just going to be doing the tree. So the tree is next. Just drying off the little spots that are still wet. Oh, I see Tabitha asked a question. Uh, and let's see, Tabitha asked, where did you get the wood piece for the painting? Uh, Tabitha, I don't know if you'll see this again if you come back on. I'll, I'll even answer in the comment uh, when I'm done with the video. But I got this uh, wood cut out uh, from a wholesale company. Um, and so they, uh, you have to be a business in order to, and you have to be approved, um, set up an account and be approved in order to order things. But it, you can only order in bulk, unfortunately. You can't just order one tree. And Peggy, I thought I had thought about this one. I'm still working on my tree. Oh, Peggy, you're still working on your ceramic tree. Well, when you finish, Peggy, you're gonna have to show me. All right, I'm just about done. There's one stubborn spot here. All right, close enough. All right, so I'm literally gonna do on the tree what I did down here. I'm just gonna squiggle some white on it and. And then maybe a few little dots for snowflakes. Um, oh, actually, you know what I forgot? I forgot the glitter. But we will, we can still add that on. Let's see. So, tops of the branches get the snow. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can make it however you want. But typically the snow falls on the top of the branches. So unless you defy gravity and snow comes up underneath your branches, I would try to stay on the top. Right, we will um, dry this to put the snow text on. So we will have to do another a little dry, but that's all right. For the love of art. So if anybody um, watches this video, I just want to note out that um, I do have a few things going on for Christmas. I have, and like I think I mentioned before, I have uh, in like a week, I think it is. I can't remember the date. But I have um, another Facebook Live going where I'm going to show you how to paint a really cute uh, 3D door hanger. Uh, and it's got a reindeer on it. And I just, I really like it. I think it's really cute. So I'll be doing that in about a week. Actually, I think it might be like November 20th. I think I might have set it up for Right, we're just literally no, no true, no real rhyme or reason to how we're doing this snow. You don't want it to be perfectly straight across. We're literally making like, you know, it can be, we're just making some rough idea here for the snow. We're getting really close to being done. Okay, so I think we have a good amount for the snow. I'll just add, um, I could add, I think I'm going to add glitter, guys. I did it for my last one. You don't even need to add a lot. Just gonna get a separate little plate here. I've got some green sparkly glitter paint. I'm literally just gonna add a little bit. It doesn't have to be a lot. 
Right, but I'm just going to do it. It's kind of dark, so I'm just going to do it in some areas. If it goes over some other stuff, it's okay. We're just, when it dries, it's literally just going to be a little bit of glitter. So it doesn't matter which spot it's on. It's pretty much just like clear paint with glitter in it. Which is really cool because it, I do have some of my kits that have like actual real glitter. Not glitter paint, but like real loose glitter. Um, and the kids love it. It adds a really cool 3D texture. It's got bigger glitter flakes. Um, but it's just so messy when you're painting. So that's what I like about the glitter, the glitter paint. And you can add as much or as little glitter as you want, or none at all if you want. I suppose it depends on who's painting this. If a guy is painting it, he might not want any glitter. If a girl's painting it, she might want a whole bunch. Although I suppose it's stereotyping, isn't it? Okay, so I've got a ton of glitter on here. I'm just going to put a little over some other spots. Alright, so that's literally throughout the whole tree. I didn't do so much on the white, but pretty much throughout the rest of the tree. Alright, so the next step, we're two steps away, guys. So now I'm just going to add some dots for snowflakes using my fine liner brush and the white paint. We don't need to add a lot because we already have snow on the branches. We're just, we don't want to not have snowflakes in our tree either. Or else it might not look realistic. I think we got just about enough snowflakes. Okay. So now I will... Actually, I don't even need to dry it. I think it's good enough. I'm going to add the snow text. I'm right, moving some stuff out of the way because for this step I will pick up my board because I'm going to have to kind of scrape the snow text on. So I will show you. So our truck is pretty much complete. I'm going to add some snow text on for the final touches. So this is what the container of snow text looks like. If you guys have never used it, it's really cool for holiday, wintry uh, projects. Um, so when you open it up, it looks like this. It does not come out. Literally doesn't come out. It's very hard stuff. It's wet. It's mushy. Kind of like play-doh so uh, you just literally take some it looks like I don't know if you can see it, it's kind of blurry but it looks like sand it's got a sandy texture to it um, so we will just pick up our tree the I'm gonna put snow on the bottom I'm gonna I'm gonna do that at the end because I'm gonna kind of stand it up to put the snow on the tree all right so just be careful not to touch the glitter because the glitter is still wet uh, you could dry this. Obviously, you could dry this if you want. But this is nice because you can literally just kind of scrape it on with your finger. And it gives it a 3D texture. So anybody who looks at it up close will be like, you know, you might not be able to see it in uh, in a video. But if you look at it up close, you'll be like, oh, that's really cool. So this will come in the kit. If you do purchase a kit online, I do add snow text. I have special cups that I put it in so that way it doesn't dry out on you guys because it's not 
not exactly like paint. It doesn't dry as fast as paint, but I would imagine because of the sand, it probably needs to be sealed a little bit better than regular paint. And you can add this on however you want, wherever you want. We're just adding the final touches of snow tech. So if you're just coming on and you missed this video, no worries. Uh, you can. I'm gonna repost it so you can watch it from the beginning if you want. Um, I am just painting the truck. I just finished painting the truck in the tree. This is very customizable for anyone, uh, any family, any last name. It can be however you want to. It could be your town name. I did Smith Farms on here, but you can do it however you like. It would make a nice gift. People love things that are custom to them. So even if you did, like, somebody that you love, your mom, you could put your mom's name here or whatever, and it would be a really cute decoration. So I'm even going to add some over here where the snow is built up on the, on the fender, the bottom of the fenders and the bumper. You can, when you put it on, you can kind of hear it. it has a rough sound to it. We're just scraping it on. We're almost done, guys. It takes an, about an hour and a half to do this. But if you would like to purchase this kit and do it yourself, it's right on my website or uh, kayleescanvases.com or you can... Um, or you can message me and I can custom make one for you if you don't want to do the artsy part of it. Right, you can even add a little up here if you wanted. However you want to do it. Alright, and I think I'm done. So it's that easy and it's pretty much it. I'm going to recenter it for a second. But, yep, so it's that easy. I'm going to post this video to YouTube, so I will say um, if you are watching this on YouTube, feel free to like this video, uh, share this video, and definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel. I am very slow with getting in the technological world when it comes to YouTube, but definitely support, show the love, share, um, and I appreciate you all watching. Thank you very much, and have a great night.